So what I'm going to do today is make a paratha, which is a paratha, well, several parathas. Um, so that's a apparently South Asian flatbread recipe. Um, it's really nice. Uh, yes, I've done it before, and it's um, really flaky. So let's get on with it. G'day, folks. Andy here from McDowell Manor. comes from uh, seriouseats.com um, it is a good one like I say I've done it before I know it works so we've got three cups of now they say plain flour but I always use baker's flour it's the high protein one a tablespoon of salt and I'll just whisk that in with a fork add two tablespoons of um, vegetable oil and then we're going to knead that into there so you just rub it between like that the flour and the oil until it's all well combined. So there's my patented rubbing in style for what you want. I think the aim is to make sure there's no lumps in there so that's pretty much all I do. Once you make a well and you pour a one cup of warm water in there. Now I'm going to bury that and add the warm water but I'm also going to add a tablespoon of minced garlic because I want to make garlic paratha. Okay so there's the garlic in there you can see in the well I'm about to add the water. I actually added two tablespoons of minced garlic. It just, one tablespoon didn't look like enough so I went for a second. Let's add that warm water and we'll just mix all that together by hand until it's roughly sort of combined and then we'll knead it for about five minutes. Okay, now this has happened every time I've made this recipe. Can you see there's dry flour in the bottom that just refuses to combine with the ball? Now that means it's too dry. So every time I've made it, I've just added another tablespoon to the dry stuff at the bottom and then combined it and it's worked fine. There he is, I just kneaded that in the, um, in the bowl. I didn't even take it out and do it on the bench. It makes too much mess. Um, so we'll, we've club, covered him up, that's just to stop him drying out, that cling wrap. Uh, we'll leave him for an hour and then we'll come back and do the next step. Fortunately it got left for more than an hour, because of course I got distracted doing other things. But you can see that's nicely hydrated now, so I'm going to cut that into eight even parts. Ish. Close enough's good enough. I've just thrown a bit of plain flour on the bench. Um, I'll re-roll these. So what I do is I halve it, halve the ball, then I halve those, those again, and then I halve them again, and you get these eight even bits. Um, so I roll them into balls, and then I stretch them out, and then we're about to roll them with a rolling pin until we get the bits almost paper thin. Little ball, I'm going to squash that flat. Now the video actually buggered up the first time I did this, so I've, I'm using one that's already been done, but I'll redo it just to show you how it, how it is. So that's one of the one-eighth pieces. Uh, I've just squashed that flat by hand and stretched it out a bit. I'm now going to roll that to a really as thin, almost as thin as I can get it. See that's really as paper thin. Uh, that's so thin in fact you can see the, <laughs> look at that, the pattern um, of the breadboard through the bread. Now we're going to paint that with ghee. Or oh, ghee is clarified butter. If you want to use butter it looks fairly butterish. Um, I try to use the thicker stuff because it spreads better. So you just spread that uh, pretty much as thin as you can get it folks. If you make the mistake of putting the ghee on really thick or the butter on really thick at this point um, I'm about to show you my the tricky roll you do. Um, you'll have butter smooching everywhere. So you can see me just moving it around making sure not too much any place but it is covered. All right, I'll finish that up and then show you the roll. Just coiling it and coiling it up on itself um, like a snake. So we'll do that until that whole bit's done. If I too much ghee, it'll be splurching out of there, something shocking. So I'll show you the second part of the roll. You roll, a bit tricky with just my left hand, but you roll around this side like that until you get to about the middle. Then you do the opposite way for the other side like that until you get to about the middle, like that. 
then you flip it on itself and give it a good hard squash now this one's not squashing as well as normal because like I say it's already been done once um, I just wanted that, that bit of video didn't store so I wanted to be able to show you properly um, now that sits for an hour uh, now we'll go back to continuing on with the magic of video where you shouldn't notice anything went wrong at all for 45 minutes but it's getting late and I can't be buggered doing it tonight so they'll actually keep for 24 hours at this stage in the fridge so I'm going to wrap them between layers of baking paper I'll pop them in the fridge and we'll continue this little episode tomorrow today we've got one of the snails out well I'll do the whole lot but I'm only going to show you one we've got one of the snails out I'm about to flatten that and roll it into as round a flatbread as I can muster so you can see it's a nice size um, fairly thin not quite as thin as the last one we're going to fry that for its first cook about three minutes or so. First flip, you can see I turned that up a little high and she's browner than I would have liked, but that's okay. It actually rises. You see it rise, that's you know when to flip. So I've turned the heat down a bit now and we'll... I don't know if you can see, but that's actually starting to give a little bit of a second rise. So that's almost done for its first cook. I then let it cool and then I cook it again. That's the second side. I'm actually letting that cool now and then I'll give it a second cook. See, on both occasions I'm using a dry pan. I happen to be using a cast iron pan. See, even on the first cook you can actually see how fine the layers in this bread is. See that opening up there with multiple really fine layers? Isn't that fantastic? And that's just the way it was, um, you know, that snake wrap that we did. Put it on for its second cook. That's only going to be about one minute each side. Now, once it comes out after the second cook, you'll find you can eat it two ways. If you eat it warm, it's soft and layered and lovely. If you let it cool completely, it actually goes quite crisp, which is a completely different experience. Um, I like both, but my favourite is the... Um, the warm version so I'm going to pull a little bit off in a, in a little while and just show you that and we won't go into detail how I'm about to use it for a sausage and salad wrap for breakfast don't worry about any of that started to rise again that's the sign we'll flip it and as soon as that rises which will only I can see it's coming up now I don't know if you can see that that's actually cooked and ready to go see that flake Lake again, I'll open it up just to show you inside. You really see the layers in that, can't you? Uh, I'll just try this little bit, if I can pull it off. Okay, so the two tablespoons was exactly right on the garlic. Yeah, that's perfect. Can't believe it. Yum. All right, folks, you have a good one, eh? Um, if you like this kind of stuff, feel free to subscribe. Look at that. Anyway, uh, hit the bell button and you'll be notified when new videos come out. Alright, see ya. Sneaky breakfast wrap. Oh man.